Many years ago, I made a documentary visiting all the Philadelphia locations from the Rocky films. The most famous, of course, is the Art Museum Steps, which everyone calls the Rocky Steps. We all know it's a tradition to run those steps and pose next to the statue. So we've been there, done that. But what about Rocky IV? In that movie, he gets even stronger and climbs a mountain. Have you ever wondered where that is? Everybody knows the Art Museum Steps, but shouldn't the mountain be just as iconic when it comes to Rocky? Of course, it's kind of difficult because the Rocky IV locations are more elusive and sometimes dangerous. Well, <laughs> I've been wanting to do this for a long time and I'm finally making the trip. I'm gonna find that mountain. The movie takes place in Russia, so that's where I'm heading. Nope. Actually, they filmed in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Much easier. As I touched down, I realized the mission had begun, just as it had for Rocky, as he steps out into a rugged, unfamiliar place that will challenge him, where he'll be thinking of nothing but Drago. This is Russia. Don't look so tough, Rock. For my crew, I brought Derek Wayne Johnson, who's directed a number of Rocky-related documentaries. Many years ago, I interviewed him on Cinemassacre regarding his film King of the Underdogs, which is all about John Avildsen, the director of Rocky and Karate Kid. Derek also edited a documentary about the making of the Rocky IV director's cut and has worked with Stallone quite a bit. It's cool. I, I actually, uh, I told Sly that we were going to do this, so he, when you approached me about it, I told him and then that was kind of a while ago, and then I told him the other day. So he's very aware of what we're doing. You're telling me that Sylvester Stallone knows that we're doing this? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> the locations of Rocky IV are very cryptic. There's some info on the old internet. Sites like TotalRocky.com helped us find the general vicinity but we wanted to pinpoint the exact spots, if possible. Remember the cabin and the little village area where he trains? Where was that? Well, in the Jackson Hole Valley, within Grand Teton National Park, somewhere between the towns of Moose and Kelly, there's an area known as Antelope Flats, where lies a historic district called Mormon Row. Settlers arrived here in 1890, and many of those historic cabins are still around. To the west, you can see the Grand Teton mountain range, the same mountains you see in the film. It's no wonder why they chose this area for filming, because it's absolutely gorgeous. But does it look like Siberia? Sure, why not? Yeah, we'll just accept it. We'll accept that this is what Siberia looks like. Yeah. So, hey, why not? One of my uh, favorite lines, uh, which didn't make it into the re-edit, unfortunately, is uh, when Paulie says, we'll crack out here. We'll crack out here. Other movies were filmed here, such as the classic Western Shane. We explored the area and found many remains of old structures, wondering if this could be from any of those old movies or even Rocky IV. We also saw plenty of prairie dogs. So cute. The cabins all look very familiar to Rocky IV, but when comparing to the film, none of them match. Many of them are older than the film, so you'd think they'd be in the shots. Well, the angle of the mountains is not exact because in the film, there's another peak that's sticking out. To get this precise angle, you'd have to go north a bit. So we followed the path until we saw this. The sign here is telling us that if we go past this point, 
we're trespassing, so we're not gonna do that. So we can say confidently that those cabins once existed somewhere out there. So the cabins are gone, but I think we've gotten as close as possible. I like that scene where he's running by and he helps somebody out who's got a horse stuck in the snow. It's always cool. What's up with that one guy that's always following Rocky around? We actually see the shot where the guy brings up the binoculars. Yep, those hills match pretty well. I like how they do the multiple takes of him, like bringing them up, gets in closer. And this kind of makes sense because it's creating like a trail of where they film, like all the spots. So we're kind of moving closer to the area where we suspect the cabin might have been. The main cabin where Rocky stayed was only a facade built for the movie and probably struck down immediately after. We still wanted to see if we could find the spot. It's supposed to be in Mormon Row and the mountains match all the same if you're looking west, but there's one problem. There's a hill in the way, and if you're standing in Mormon Row, there's no hill there. The only contender we saw was slightly to the west, near the intersection of Antelope's Flat Road and the highway, which Google Maps calls Highway 191, 89, and 26. So which is it? I don't know. We unfortunately couldn't get too close to the hill because the area is home to private residences. But just on the other side, as you're passing the hill, there's a little hiking area. So I climbed up to try to get a view, but there wasn't much to see. I think Rocky's cabin would have been right on the other side of this hill here. So this is as close as I can possibly get. Without being able to get closer to look at the hill from the correct angle and line up the mountains properly, we couldn't confirm this spot. So the Rocky cabin may have to stay a mystery. We weren't quick enough to capture it on video, but a coyote just ran across the street. Boy, the stare that thing gave me. I'm glad we weren't out of the car when we saw that thing. Here's a question. Do you think of Rocky IV as a Christmas movie? Because it takes place, the fight takes place on Christmas. I've never thought of that. I've never yeah. seen anyone write about that. Everyone's always talking about Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Are they Christmas movies? I, I think you're right. I think. And there's that Chipmunks Christmas song. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think now Rocky IV is a Christmas movie. Rocky IV is a Christmas movie. There you go. You know what I do gotta say? It's pretty, it's pretty messed up that he chooses Christmas to have the fight. Yeah, like, hey, why don't I just leave my wife and kid and just go fight for free, no money, in Siberia? Yeah, no big deal. There's a scene where the guy watches Rocky cross the river. We wanted to find that bridge, so we went to Teton Pass Highway where it crosses Snake River. By the way, jumping from bridge is prohibited. I'll keep that in mind. If you face south, the position of the hill matches. And the bridge itself is spot on. It could have been like, hey, stand right there. So he's standing in front of this probably, because if you count the screenshot, one, two, three, and then a thick one, it matches. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was pretty lucky. This would also mean the river below is probably where Rocky ran but we weren't able to confirm. But the most important spot, without a doubt, is Rocky IV's equivalent of the art museum steps, the ever-elusive and daunting mountaintop. What's the mountain called? Well, the Rocky Mountains. It's not a joke. It really is part of the Rocky Mountain range. The internet has suggested Rendezvous Mountain, but I haven't seen anyone match up a shot or confirm, so that's why we're going. How much climbing you up to doing? I think uh, I think we should climb about 10,000 feet. What do you say? Yeah, 10,700 feet. That's how high it is. Well, yeah. I think we should do it. <laughs> I 
I never thought about that. Like, okay, what do I do if, if a hang glider comes into the road? Well, I'm obviously gonna swerve out of the way, but that's not a thought that ever entered my brain. Look, he's really, he's getting pretty close to the road here. We arrived in Teton Village, home of the Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. I'm pretty sure it's up there. This is where we'd make our ascent up the mountain to a height of 10,450 feet. This is it. We're on our way up. Now in the movie, it seems Rocky just runs from the base all the way up the mountain, running all the way up there, knee deep in snow. Yeah, it would be pretty crazy, but not us. We're gonna take the lazy way. We're gonna take the aerial tram, yeah. The aerial tram gives a spectacular view, to say the least. It's truly amazing. It's like sailing through a Bob Ross painting. And it's my belief this is how the Rocky IV crew made it to the top. The sign confirms the tram access was here since 1966, so this would be the most likely way for them to bring up their camera, tripod, etc. It takes you right up to an area called Top of the World, this is an excellent tourist spot, gives a breathtaking view, and makes for plenty of great pictures. Immediately, we began scanning the mountains for any matchups, and soon enough came our first sign of success. They got him running up the side. Now, oh yeah, oh yeah, those trees match perfectly. Yeah, no, it's per, <laughs> whoa. Yeah, there's, there's no question about it. It's a perfect match, it's dead on. We've confirmed, without a doubt, Sylvester Stallone was right over there. He ran up this slope, which is very steep and impressive, and his final mark must have been somewhere over there. This is where he raised his arms and yelled Drago. Unfortunately, we couldn't get any closer. It was roped off. So I think the spot where he was standing was somewhere past these ropes, which we can't get to, unfortunately, um, because there's some construction going on. It's not safe. Um, basically, the boundaries are here for a reason. There's a full body shot that's not in the movie, but you can find it all over Google. I don't know if it's a promo shot or a behind the scenes photo or what, but the angle of the mountains matches perfectly. It seems like he's standing on ground that really matches that matter. over there. So I think that's where he would have been. This is about as close as I could replicate the shot. In the picture, the mountains appear much closer because they used a telephoto lens for dramatic effect. In the film, if you look at the side view of Rocky, you can see the mountains from this angle also match. This would mean Rocky is facing west. And if you look at the next shot of his backside, sure enough, that's where the sun's setting. This completely matches. So there's like this little sloping line in the trees here, and then these little line of trees here that's broken in the middle there, that little gap. The geography of this scene is perfectly correct, and by using all these shots, we've triangulated his position. We've confirmed the Rocky Mountain. Drago! Drago! Did we see anyone else screaming Drago? No. It felt weird to be standing at such a major Rocky location without anyone else seeming to be aware of it. There's even a Waffle House right near the spot called Corbett's Cabin. Man, it smells amazing. <laughs> You just picture uh, Rocky running up here and you know getting all in shape and everything. And he's just like pouring syrup on waffles. <laughs> we went inside, curious if there was any acknowledgement, a single picture, piece of memorabilia, or merchandise anywhere. Not a single thing. 
Maybe Teton Village likes to keep their town simple. It's a quiet little town. In fact, you might say it's boring. Boring. So anyway, we found the spot. But there's more to it. You might have noticed if you look at the distant shots and compare it to where we were just at, the surface he's standing on doesn't match. It also seems like it was shot separately. The film stock has a different grain and color, the clouds and sun are in a different place. It all suggests the close-ups and the helicopter shots were filmed separately at two different mountaintops. The nearest point at 10,700 feet is Cody Peak, popular among skiers, a daredevil's delight, 100% detached from civilization. It's not even labeled on Google Maps. In fact, Google Maps will take you to a different Cody Peak in East Yellowstone Park. So it's very confusing. It's the same situation where some have suggested Cody Peak is the location, but none have ever matched up shots, at least not to my knowledge. And I looked all over. But it makes perfect sense they would want to film all the way down there because it's away from tourists and everything because they want to film somewhere where you don't see that aerial tram. It's supposed to look like it's out in the middle of nowhere in Siberia. So that's what I think. You can count on Rocky to make it up a big scary mountain like that. Us? Well, it's uh, quite a hike. <laughs> um, well, I think we should maybe, yeah, yeah. I don't know, we're here. You want to do it? You want to say we do it. We do it. Yeah. Hey, if Rocky could do it, we can do it. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. <laughs> As the ominous mountain got closer, a feeling of dread came over us. This is where the path ends. The next part would involve almost vertical climbing along a giant rocky slope. This is crazy. Yeah. The video does not do it justice. Seeing it in person is the only way to know how risky it is. I had underestimated it. While I was researching and preparing for this trip, I looked at videos taken here by serious mountain climbers and skiers who were more brave than us. They made it look so easy. And that's a common thing, to watch somebody else and think, hey, I can do that. And then you try it yourself and realize there's more to it. For one thing, we could have used some proper climbing gear. It seemed like a good idea to wear my old beat up shoes because, hey, they get beaten up anyway. But the treads were all worn down and I kept slipping. And even experienced climbers and skiers have died here before. But I don't know about climbing up that and with this wind going on. What's yeah. up? The wind. You see, I couldn't <laughs> even hear you because it was so strong. Wow. I'm just holding on to my hat. Uh, you guys can't tell, but it's uh, there's a huge draft right here just pushing us back. Yeah. If we get hurt here, it's not an option. There's just nothing. Like, what are we going to do? So. And quite frankly, earlier, a kid actually fell about 50 feet or so yeah and he's okay he's okay um, yeah but we didn't witness it but we mm. were there af right after it happened and he was getting bandaged up yeah. so we're kind of like well what are we gonna do we're gonna turn around and see if there's another path to get there so we went on an excursion looking for a less risky route or any other way to get up that damn mountain
Down by Cody Bowl is when we realized how high it actually was. I tried to fly a drone up there, but it reached its maximum height and still wasn't able to get close to the peak. But I was sure that's where Rocky was and I wanted to prove it so badly. It seemed so close, yet so far away. We returned to the cliff from before, knowing this was indeed the way up. but the risks were weighing on us. Some people are more risk-taking than others, such as the paragliders we saw earlier. And I think we reached our limit. We, we made it pretty far though. We did, and you know, there were a group of hikers, they were uh, teenagers, and they, were, they went up a little bit further than us, and they, but uh, they turned back as well. Everyone got to a certain spot where we were and turned back, so we don't feel yeah. too bad. A lot was going on inside my head right there. I truly wanted to get to the top of that mountain. For decades, I have pushed myself as hard as I could to make videos, wanting to always deliver the best product for the fans. But how far would I be willing to push myself? I just kept looking up there thinking, I could make it. But I wasn't so sure if I could make it back down. We had already slipped countless times. Slip here, I fall on my ass, no big deal but I fall up there, that's uh, something else. I scan the whole ledge thinking, how many spots, how many chances would there be for it to happen? I imagine those red X's like in Zelda Breath of the Wild that mark each spot where you died, except here, there would be only one chance. My thoughts were very complicated at that moment, but the biggest overriding thought was my children, how I had a responsibility to come back home. You know, before I went on this trip, I, uh, you know, the night before I left, I was putting my youngest daughter to bed at night and she uh, was, you know, like, kind of sad, you know, like, I'm gonna miss you, daddy. Like, and I'm like, you know, don't worry, I'm gonna be back in just a few days. It's not gonna be that long. And, you know, um, you know, so I'm letting her know, you know, don't worry, I'm gonna be okay and everything's gonna be fine. I'm gonna come back. And it reminded me of that scene in the movie, actually, where he's, t uh, where Rocky is, talking to his kid, you know, he's like putting the kid to bed or whatever. And, uh, you know, the kid's asking him like, are, are you scared? You know, if a big giant, you know, wanted to fight me, I'd be scared. Um, yeah. <laughs> As Derek and I turned back, I wondered, what was the true meaning of this trip? Was it just to find some rocky locations? Or was it something more? We saw some amazing scenery, had some quality times, and got a great workout. Jesus Christ, we've been going uphill to get back. I mean, it was so easy going down. Going down wasn't a problem. So, we didn't reach that last location, but it ain't over yet. Nothing is over! I may not be as skilled at mountain climbing, but I guess I am skilled at matching up movie shots. So there's this amazing, highly professional drone footage you can see on Vimeo, posted many years ago by photographer Tristan Gresco. It shows two skiers making the impressive climb up Mount Cody, and in the winter, I'm not sure whether or not any of them are aware of the Rocky IV connection, but if you pause the video here and compare the rocks, wouldn't you say, this is a perfect match. And if there's any doubt left, compare the face of the cliff, and there it is, the second Rocky peak confirmed at these coordinates. So, we cracked the case. But we're not going to end without leaving a little mystery behind, because there exists a wooden crate, which you can see more clearly thanks to this video posted on YouTube by Jeff Prashaw. What is the purpose of this crate? Why is it in the exact spot where Rocky stood? Could it be something left behind by production? And what could possibly be inside? I hope it's the robot. 
So even though we didn't make it all the way up that mountain, we still went the distance. We shed light on some of the most mysterious rocky locations, making us feel closer to the film and got a better understanding of the area. So I'd say we did what we set out to do. Cheers. We did it.